Welcome to the Dental Marketing Guy show. I'm Justin, the Dental Marketing Guy, and today I am joined by Rob Bay, and he is with Dental Intel. Uh, they serve over 4,000 dentists, helping you learn your numbers. It's really, really important. And, uh, you know, I've harped on this a little bit over the years. You know, why doesn't Dentrix and, and Eaglesoft and all them, why, did, why do they not allow you to easily pull numbers into QuickBooks and all that. So what we're really looking for out of this interview is I want you to understand what's going on in your practice, you know, get those numbers dialed down so that you know what's successful marketing and practice management wise. Rob, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Justin. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. Excellent. Yeah. And you know, I've heard a lot of good things about dental Intel. I'm hoping we can kind of dive into the story behind why was it even started? How did you guys get going? Um, you know, just, just the story. Yeah, great question. So it's kind of started a while ago. We'll, we'll say back in 2004, my partner who, uh, who we founded Dental Intel with, his name is Weston Lunsford. He had a CPA firm, worked with dentists and physicians, ended up mostly being dentists, 90 plus percent dentists. And the firm was involved really in tax strategy and bookkeeping, personal financial management, and trying to really help dentists make their lives better. Uh, you know, better financially, better, better overall, and have a better handle on things. But kept bumping up into this aspect of what's going on within the practice and how is that then driving the income to the, to the dentist personally. And uh, shortly after that, he and I joined together uh, and worked together within, within the CPA firm. Uh, I was from the technology side of things, and we started down that, that road of trying to understand that. And a lot of it was because we would see people that we knew, we cared about, friends of ours, that were struggling, and they were frustrated. And they'd been working hard, you know, spent all, went into all this debt, uh, did everything that they could, built up their practice, at it for a while, and the practice just plateaued and they're just still not where they want it to be and they see all their friends that are out there you know they're out there killing it they're doing great supposedly and they just are not reaching their, ex their personal expectations and so but we saw people also who were really doing great and you know not every dentist out there can be can have be in the perfect location with the best demographic and have amazing clinical skills and awesome business skills and perfect communication with their patients be super attractive. If that was repeatable and everybody, every dentist could do that, they'd, they'd all be successful, right? But we will try to find things that reasons, uh, things that dentists could do that was re, that was repeatable, that they could that they could find and that they could look at. And what we found is using data and information to drive their decisions was something that was repeatable and they could utilize to to be successful. And then acting on that data specifically was was the most important the most important thing. So that's kind of a little bit about how we came about and, and why. And uh, part of it that's been really gratifying for us is, the, is seeing what happens in these dental offices. Um, there's a, a dentist that I've known for quite a while. Um, he's from a community, a smaller community that's not too far away from us. When we first met this dentist, um, been practicing for eight or nine years. And he felt like he had, he's in a smaller town, felt like he had a bad reputation in his town, was going to sell his practice and go be an associate the rest of his life. And at that point, the most money he'd made was $76,000. And met him, said, and he, he was in that dilemma. We said, don't sell your practice. Let's look at your data, look at your numbers. Let's find out what's going on. And as we did that, we found out that, you know, what his perception of what was happening wasn't really what was happening. He did not really have a bad reputation. He was consistently getting 20, 25 new patients in a small town. Uh, he had plenty of patients, but there were some things systems-wise that he wasn't doing as he should that was causing it, as well as his confidence being down, which was causing some other issues. And so as he addressed that, started measuring those things, putting systems in place and having his team help in that, it totally changed his practice around. And within four months, he was on target to make $200,000 and ran into him not too long ago and didn't even recognize the guy. Uh, because his confidence was so much better. And he told me that he made almost $450,000 that last year. So, mm -hmm. you know, data is powerful for helping a dentist make the right decisions, especially when they have their team, their team members involved in using data 
to uh, to drive their practice forward. That's really interesting. Um, so as far as actionable tips, uh, what have you found to really some of the low hanging fruit in terms of helping dentists? Uh, if you know your numbers. Uh, whether you're using Dental Intel or not, what kind of numbers do you think are really actionable and really help? Because when you say that dentist had 20, 25 new patients per month, most dentists that I talk to would say, that's pretty good. So, so I mean, you know, in terms of uh, what, what kind of numbers do you find are the most important and then what actions could our listeners take on that data? Yeah, really, really great question because a lot of times I ask dentists, what do you measure? And they always say three things. I measure production, collections, new patients. Not one of those tells us that you made money. None of them do. And, and so we got to figure out what is it that drives success in a, in a dental practice. And there is a mathematical formula that equals success in a dental practice. And this is the formula. It's super simple. It's how many visits do we have over a period of time, month or whatever, we're going to multiply that by how much do we produce on average per visit. We're going to multiply that by our collection percentage. And that's our profitability. And if you think of each of these kind of as levers, you know, those, these, these four things, visits, production per visit, collection percentage, overhead as four levers, and we look at a practice this way, we can, it gives us a starting point at least where we can say, do I have enough visits? Am I at capacity? Am I near capacity? Am I an open capacity practice, a closed capacity practice? Once I have people here, do I produce enough per visit? And there's a lot of things that are driving each of these things. If we do that, are we collecting the money and in a timely fashion? And then what's our overhead, which then equals our profitability? So we can start to look and see where are the areas that we need to focus on. Now, when you ask about lowest hanging fruit, um, there's a lot of low hanging fruit in every single practice. A ton of it. Practices that are really struggling have it. Practices that are super successful have it. There's a practice that we started working with in September that was doing six, seven hundred thousand dollars a month. And even in that practice, there was a ton of low hanging fruit that they started working on and capitalizing on. This is a practice that's in Florida, big practice. Um, and this last month, they did one point two million dollars. And it's just a matter of finding those things. And, and what I'm talking about here is a lot of it in a dental practice where, where we see a lot of this low-hanging fruit is if we're looking at production, collection, new patients, and we're focusing on those things, even if we're spending money and we're bringing in new patients, practices have a hard time. There's a reason why practices will have constantly new patients, new patients, new patients, new patients, but they never are adding a hygienist. They're never growing in production. They're never collecting more money and they're not taking home more money. And it's because they have attrition. They're losing those patients as quickly as they're opening the door. The value of a new patient can be significantly increased exponentially if we know how to hold on to that patient for an extended period of time. And where we see this attrition happen all the time, uh, when somebody comes in as a new patient, there's a less than a 50% chance that that patient's going to come back for a second visit. Statistically, uh, there's, yeah, I mean, I know it's, it's a little bit, that's a little bit 50%, shocking. 50%. So, so it's less so than 50, the board, it's less than 50%. It's 40, it's low 40% chance that they're going to come back for a second visit. And I can get into the reasons about why and what drives it. But the important, important part to, to realize is that we're spending money, we're bringing new patients and from assist, it's not even anything patient related. It's a systems based issue that's causing this. And so one, we need to know that it's happening. We need to know where we're at. Two, if we know who those patients are, we can take action on it, especially because it's not a patient-based issue. You know, if it was you, Justin, and you came into our office and then you didn't schedule your next appointment and it's because it's our fault, if I call you, if, if there's something that's then creating a trigger and prompting me, Justin was here yesterday, he's a new patient, and we didn't reschedule him to come back, if I call you the next day, there's something that prompts me to do that. The data is, is used to prompt me. And then I call you and I say, hey, Justin, this is Rob at Awesome Dental Practice. You were here yesterday, new patient. We love you. You loved us. You had a great experience. We screwed up and we failed to schedule you for your next appointment. Some of those patients are going to say no, but a lot of them are going to say yes. And, and so there's a lot of situations like 
that, where people are losing patients, broken appointments, you know, when a patient cancels or no-shows, uh, when somebody comes in for hygiene, are we reappointing them? Uh, there's a myriad of ways where attrition is happening, where people are bringing in all these new patients, and they're getting, there's a practice I was just looking at earlier today, averaged over 200 new patients a month. The practice is declining. They're declining because they're losing more than 200 patients a month uh, in attrition. And, and it happens all it happens all the time. So we can try to outpace it with new patients and try to get 300 new patients. Or we can try to minimize attrition or work on both of those so we can actually grow the practice. There's a lot of low-hanging fruit in those areas. So increasing the lifetime value of a new patient. Now, one of the things that I find really interesting is uh, you're not just offering software as a service. I've heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, you guys are offering consulting. Where does the consulting come in? Because from my perspective, the, the software as a service is the, the service that is helping dentists know. And obviously, there's going to be an onboarding system. You got to learn the dental intel system, right? Just like any other software. Um, but are you guys offering practice management help? I mean, are you, where does the consulting come in? Okay, I, I'm really glad that you asked this question because it's a little bit of a misperception. We do not offer consulting. We're, and actually we work with, a, there are a lot of the major, major, major consultants out there that use our software to be able to help them consult. We don't consult. We're number nerds. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, little, we're little number geeks, right? You know, got our calculator and we're going to town. But what, what we do is we, we, we have people that work with the practice and it's around data and it's around numbers. It's around here's what we see is happening. Here's the things that are causing it. We're not giving them scripts on how to solve those things. We're not giving them, here's what you say or here's what you do. We're helping to identify those issues um, and helping them to essentially put an x-ray on their practice and diagnose what's going on within their practice. There's another aspect to what we do, which is it takes us beyond the data and beyond the numbers because if you're just looking at data and numbers from a management perspective, to say, oh, I had 200 new patients, oh, we did this much in production, or here's what's going on with, here's our referral sources, or whatever it may be, where the data really starts to get valuable is when we get deeper than that. We need to know why, what's driving it, what's causing it, who in our office is helping with it, who is good at it. Who is not? Who can we praise? Who needs training? And then even another level deeper than that, have the data prescribe. And what I mean by that is have the data be prescriptive in that it is taking those pieces of data that can be acted on today and it's serving it up to you on a platter and saying this patient, Justin, was a new patient yesterday, did not reschedule his appointment. Here's his name, here's his phone number, have the data or the software assign it to somebody and have the responsibility to follow through with Justin till Justin says go away or Justin schedules his next, his schedules to come back. And it's in doing those things, that type of thing where the data really becomes powerful because you could be amazing, really smart with data and and be able to see what's happening and what's going on, but there's nothing that's as, as powerful as having 10 people that are using data and each doing one little thing each day to make your practice better or make your practice stronger by adding more visits, bringing a patient back into the practice for, for a future appointment, or helping to find or identify how we can produce more or, col or collect a higher percentage or minimize our overhead, any of those things. So maybe consulting is the wrong word. So essentially you're offering numbers and in terms of them being actionable, you offer help with that. Is that, am I on the right track there? Yeah, so what we do, Justin, is we help a practice, uh, one, get some relativity to their data. Because it's important to have some relativity. When you look at a number and you look at it, you, a dentist might not exactly know is this good, is this bad. 
And so they need some relativity and they also need to know and understand what's possible and where are the areas that they should focus first. Because if you're looking, if you're looking at all the metrics and data that's available out there in the world, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of things. And so you can get caught up in you know, paralysis by analysis. And so a data analyst is helping a dentist to know, here's where I am, period. Helping a dentist to then decide, what's my objectives? Where are my goals? Now here's our difference. Where are the areas where we're most likely to get the best result in, in focusing from here to here on what types of things? Is it improving the visits? Is it production per visit? Is it, is it these things? And then what is driving that in the practice? What are the metrics that need to be focused on that are going to improve those things? And that's really what they're about. And then training. Training, training team members on how to use data, how to look at numbers, what they should be looking at that's relevant and pertinent to them in their specific role, whether they're a hygienist, an office manager, a front desk person, assistant, treatment coordinator, whatever it may be. Excellent, excellent. Some quick actionable tips that don't rely on dental intel uh, for, our, for our listeners. What, what would you say one to three, maybe more tips in terms of here's how you're gonna get to the bottom of your numbers? Okay, really good question. Start with this. Start with this formula. Visits times production per visit times collection percentage minus overhead. Go look those things up. These first two equal production. Visits times production per visit. If we look at production and it's not where we want it to be, there's nothing inherent about it that will tell us what to do. If we split this out, then we can start to look and see. Okay, my visits are declining. I'm not at capacity. Then, we, you know, we, we start to get some understanding about what's going on here. Or when we're looking at our collection, per, excuse me, our um, production per visit. If we don't know what that is, take your, your total production, divide it by how many visits that you had in the last month, and do that for a few months, and you'll know where that's at. Relativity is it, if you're an average practice, you're going to be between $250 and $300. If you're doing good at this, you'll be over $400, and we have many practices that are $1,000 or better at, at this. Find out where you're at in these things, and then from there, you want to start asking the questions why. And what, if I'm doing well, why? What, where am I doing well? Who is helping me do well? You know, wh what, where am I not doing as well? What's causing it? What's driving it? Who's involved? Same thing here. If my visits are not where I want them to be, start asking that question, why? Why? Is it because I'm having too many broken appointments? Am I not having enough new patients? Am I getting new patients, but they're, but they're not coming back? Am I not reappointing patients in hygiene? Uh, whatever it may be, start asking those questions why, and then that will lead you to what your action should be. If you're not, if data is not taking you to an action, it's useless. There's no reason to measure something that you're not going to take action on. And so that, that would be one key aspect. Second thing, and when you talked about the low-hanging fruit, is I would go find that low-hanging fruit. Of all of these things, the easiest one to improve is how many visits we have. And an average practice operates at about 51% capacity. And so in order to improve this, we need to get more patient visits. We need more patients. And that may be through marketing efforts to bring in new patients. It may be in minimizing our attrition or bringing back patients that we've lost. And where we lose them is they come in new and we don't reschedule them. They come in for a hygiene visit, we don't reschedule them. They break uh, an appointment, either they no-show or they cancel. And we just let them walk out the door and, and walk away. Go find out who those people are and assign somebody to take action on those, on those patients. Our software automatically does that for you. But if you're not using it, go try to go track those people down. And, and if you do, it will help you to be able to then take action and, and capitalize on that lowest hanging fruit. Excellent. Excellent. I love it. Uh, so where can the viewers and the listeners find you? Yeah. best Where they can find us is on dentalintel.com. Uh, if you're on dentalintel.com, you can schedule a demo on there. But also I wanted to offer something to some of your people who are on here, if that's okay. Is that okay? Absolutely. 
Um, we, for, for your listeners who are listening to this, we want to offer them a free snapshot of their data. And what I mean is we will do, uh, we will pull the data, we'll, we'll build the dashboard, and we will show you your own specific data and help you see what's happening and what's going on. And in doing that, then you'll have a good idea where those areas are. If you choose to then continue on with the data, you can, but there's no obligation to. It's a free, a free snapshot that we want to provide. And in order to do that, uh, best easiest way to do that is I'm gonna give a, a number that you can text to. It's a short code. Text to the number 77453. Set the number 77453. Text the word snapshot. Then let's say Justin and then your name and your email address. We'll follow up with you to be able to get you your free snapshot. So to the number 77453, text snapshot, S-N-A-P-S-H-O-T, then Justin, so we know that you found us from here, then your own name and then your email address, and then we'll contact you to get that set up for you for free. Excellent. That's that's great. And tracking is key. I mean, obviously you understand that. So thank you very much for coming on the show. And uh, uh, yeah, th this has been really educational. I, I think that there's definitely been a void for many years. Uh, obviously you guys identified that in, in the CPA business for Dennis. Um, yeah, I mean, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Had a good time. And thanks, guys, for watching the Dental Marketing Guy show. If you see this on Dental Town, if you see this on uh, the Dental Marketing Guy blog, uh, wherever you see this, YouTube, uh, feel free to put questions in the comments below. Feel free to uh, ask anything that you're wondering. Did we miss something? Uh, I'd, I'd love to hear from you. All right. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.